Otter Creek, Virginia is really one of those uh, last remaining unique special places here on the East Coast. Uh, the entire Eastern Shore area in general is uh, just a sportsman's paradise and is lush with uh, abundant wildlife and uh, unique vegetation. There are ample offshore fishing and inshore opportunities available in the area and not only is the fishing great but the uh, hunting opportunities are also widely available. Um, duck hunting has been a premier in this area for over a hundred years and there's also a healthy population of white-tailed deer along with many other species. We're just really excited we get a chance to come down here and uh, fish this tournament. It's the uh, 25th year of the tournament which is really special for the town. I think this is a uh, my uh, fourth year of fishing the tournament here and this year we'll be down here with the whole smoke show team um, my good friend uh, Kyle is going to be coming up from down there in Kansas where he's been uh, hunting white-tailed deer all this winter and I'm sure he's got a lot of great stories to tell so uh, we're just looking forward to catching some fish and hopefully getting on the board here early Hello, this is Kyle Wentzel with Smoke Show Outdoors. Um, this week I came down to Washer Creek, Virginia. This is the 2015th annual flounder fishing tournament. Um, I flew in from Kansas on uh, April 28th and I expected to you know, fish for about two or three days. Good fishing depending on weather. I learned a lot and to tell you the truth, this is my first time really getting the flounder fishing. My, uh, my co-partner, Shane Stauffer, he, he's really into flounder fishing. He knows a little bit more than me. So it was, for me, it was to get to know it and uh, get out there, have some fun, enjoy it. Some all, you know, all you guys might not have that opportunity to do that, but I loved it. Day one of the tournament was great. We got out there, uh, we woke up, the sun was shining. Uh, the water was calm, the winds were calm, it, it was just turning out to be a great day. The winter back home had been so cold, I think one of the records, it was 29 straight days of freezing temperatures and we were just so happy to be able to wear shorts and a t-shirt and get out there in the water and do some fishing finally. This was the f first time we've been fishing this year and uh, we were just looking forward to it. Uh, I had been in the, I wanted to check out some areas that I had um, fished the, the year before and had done really well on. So we got out there, we wanted to do a little prospecting, see what was happening. Uh, the, the fish at this time of year will be hanging out on those ledges um, and drop-offs when the tide's falling and they're going to be up on those flats and the shallower water two to three feet when the when the tide's um, up high. So we just wanted to get out there, see what was happening. Um, it took us a little while to get rigged up, uh, but once we were ready to go, we got the rods in the water and, and we were ready to troll. All right, man, so we're set up here. Uh, we're in Gates Channel. Our water temperature is about 60 degrees. Have you ever done any trolling for flounder before? No, i never done trolling. This is the first time I ever did trolling for flounder. It's kind of like you're offshore fishing, trolling for those tuna, those wahoos, and uh, you're just trolling for flounder. The advantages are, you know, over drifting, you can control the way you're you're drifting over the holes if the wind or the tides run in a bad way. You can miss the areas you want to fish, um, those drop-offs uh, where the flounder like to stage themselves. Also, you get to uh, cover more ground. Um, a lot of the old timers swear by the trolling for flounder and the luck I've had down here, it's really a, a good strategy to cover a lot of ground. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, did you have any success trolling we have. in recent years? Or? We have down here. Last year we did a lot of trolling. Um, we didn't catch the big one when we were trolling, but we definitely picked up a couple nice fish. Um, what you do is you rig up just like you're going to drift for flounder, except instead of instead of drifting, you uh, put heavy weights on. You want to use about a, between a 10 and a 12 ounce sinker, 
and that'll keep your bait down and keep the baits from tangling behind the boat. Okay. So right now we're only trolling, you know, we're trolling four rods here, we're just using squid and a minnow, little different spoon combinations, which, you know, I'll show you later. And uh, we're doing about one, 1 1.5 miles an hour. The slower the trolling for flounder, the better off you are. Yeah, and we're about 12 feet deep right now, so. So you can see we're just coming right down here along this edge. And we're trolling. And Kyle's also working a bucktail here along this these oyster beds. This is an, uh, they do a lot of commercial oyster farming down here. And those flounders like to hang out right on that bank there. What's flounder like? What type of water, water do they like, you know? Well, down here, it's a back bay estuary. It's one of the best flounder fishing. It's Wash Creek, the flounder capital of the world. That's what its tagline is for the town. But it, it is a great spot for flounder because they have this clean back bay water. Actually, we're sitting right here right now beside uh, VIMS, which is Virginia Institute of Marine uh, Sciences. It's a College of William and Mary institution. And they do research and study here of the backwater ecosystem from the clams and bivalves all the way up to the offshore fish and the offshore reefs. They use Washoe Creek as their primary ground why they build their unit here is because the, the estuary here in the eastern shore is so clean and it's a water fed, uh, ocean fed environment and it's just a really great environment to study the natural habitat of these animals that we love. Day two of the tournament, it was another beautiful morning. Uh, we were out in the water, the winds were calm again. Uh, the air temperature was a little cooler, but uh, you know, we were happy with that. Uh, we, we thought we had dialed in the fish a little better from the day before, and we, when we got out in the water, we wanted to hit those, um, those back bays where the water is uh, only around two to three feet deep. On the high tides, that's where the uh, flounder are gonna look to be staging themselves. So. We got out there, uh, we found some really nice warmer water, and uh, we just ended up drawing the ledges here and picking up a few nice fish. Uh, we were happy there to uh, break the ice and get uh, nice fish on board. Uh, unluckily, we had forgotten the net back at the dock, so um, a few of these we were landing uh, off the cuff over the side railing. Uh, that was a lot of fun. We didn't lose any, but uh, <laughs> always got to double check and make sure you got all your equipment. Uh, it's still early in the tournament, though, and, and uh, we were just happy we had one on board. Oh, it's not, it's not a flounder. What is it? It's a blue? It's a big blue. Over here. Nice. Nice blue right here. Nice work. Day two ended with only two fish in the boat. Wasn't exactly what we wanted, but uh, you know, we broke the ice there. Um, we heard of some nice bigger fish being caught in the area, so uh, we're just gonna get at it tomorrow and uh, see what we can do. Lots of time left here in Wash Creek. Day three of the tournament started out in a cool, crisp note uh, with temperatures in the upper 40s. We had our warm weather gear on and we got out in the water. 
Uh, we decided to check out an area that Kyle had suggested out by the uh, mouth of the backwater, out by the inlet. Uh, there's some deeper water out there and ledges anywhere from 10 to 30 feet deep, and we thought it'd be a good idea to get in there and see if anything was going on. We knew there was fish in the area being caught, so uh, we, we thought we'd check it out. Sure, but that's probably about 17 inches, I would say. Check him out, see what he is. 18. All right, let's get these breaks. That's pretty good for one pass. Yep. They're out here, they're out here. We'll pick them up, pick at them. Smelts. Pick it today. Just fishing this on behind a green double hook rig. He is to not have it spin and look natural in the water. You hook it through the eye, then you slide this hook. The second hook is a trailer hook. You can. Uh, Adjust it. Adjust it up and down depending on the length of the bait because they're all different sizes. I'm going to tuck it in the back of there like that. And you're good to go. Back in action. Is this line in the way?
The day ended cool and collected. Uh, we had picked up some nice fish, uh, fishing those smelt baits out there by the inlet. Um, that was definitely the ticket on the day. Um, we're a little bit disappointed we haven't caught a little more and a few nicer fish uh, up until this point, but um, we're going to get out there tomorrow, see what we can do. Uh, it's the last day. we got to give it all we got and see if we can make some magic happen. All right, well, it's the last day of the tournament. What's our plan? I say we go up where we've been fishing, up at um, the hammock, see what we can pull out of there. Weather's really nice right now, flat water. Beautiful. Yeah, I think that's where to, where to head in that shallow water where they've been catching them. Yeah, we'll do a little bit of trolling, see what we can do with, with that. We'll try to switch it up today, try uh, minnows with this. Just the hook. Yeah, we've been using lots of uh, fancy skirts and pink and green, and uh, people have been having luck on them. Those we've been talking to, but uh, we haven't seemed to uh, find our charm lure yet. So today we're going to go back to basic, and we're going to uh, troll a few just basic minnow rigs with a three way swivel and uh, a bear hook. So, once you run out of options, you go back to the basics. Yeah. So we'll start from there. What's and what's the tide at right now? The tide right now is high tide. Okay. So the high tide is when you want to fish in those, uh, those bays because the flounder come up there into that water that's normally uncovered at low tide. And there's all kinds of crustaceans and dittos and that they have access to that they don't have the low tide. That's why it's good fishing in the, the shallower water and then when they're backing off, as the tide falls, they back off into the creeks and ledges along the uh, channel edges and wait for the bait to get washed out over those drop offs. And that's sometimes, hopefully, what we want to find, but it hasn't been that simple so far. Now, I see there's a lot of boats out today. We just seen Ron go out. So, we already have our other crew out right now. We call it one, one keeper. Should be a good day. Ready. Need a hammer today. That's change. See, I call this the no nonsense rig or the simple rig. You got a three way swivel, which goes to your line. One of them goes to a sinker with a dropper loop. And the other goes to just a leader, about three, two, two feet long, with an Ingress style gap hook on it. And that's the no nonsense rig. One of the key components to any flounder drifting or trolling rig, I think, uh, that people don't realize all the time, is this dropper loop off the sinker. If you fish without this loop on, which we did on one of our rods yesterday, we got stuck a lot of times um, because there's just not that gap between the line, like the main line, and your sinker, and this tends to not snag up as much when you're trolling over bars and ledges and drop-offs. The one rod we had we trolled got stuck four times. Every other one that had these dropper loops on didn't get stuck at all. So I swear by using the dropper loop off of here. We talk to a lot of flounder fishermen that catch lots of fish. They swear by using this dropper off here. It's an easy way, easy way to connect your sinker. Uh, if you haven't tried it before, give it a shot. The final day there, uh, it was a beautiful day again, and great to be out there on the water. We didn't pick up the big fish we want, but we did pick up a few nice fish. Overall, it was good uh, catching up with Kyle. I'm getting to start the season and kick it off right here in Washoe Creek, Virginia.
four. One in the back. All right, so what did you think about the week, Kyle? Did you have a good time? Did you have fun? Yeah, I had a really good time. I, like I said, I really didn't know expect. The winter has been really bad down here. I know where I was down in Kansas, the, the, the winter was really cold. The water temperature isn't up. So I, I, to me, I really didn't expect it was going to happen. It's been the coldest winter down here in nine years. I talked to some of the locals. Yeah. They froze. That happens probably every one in ten years. The bay out here froze. It was just a... The past two year, two winters down here have been absolutely crazy compared to what I'm used to, compared to what the locals are used to. It's just been, I don't know, global warming, what do you want to call it? It's changing the fish patterns down here. And yeah. uh, I think that was evident this week in the fishing. I know we fished down here with you in the past when you came down two or three years ago. And uh, with my with our brother, well, our brother, my brother Seth, and you said, what did you catch? 20, 30 yeah, fish a 20, day. 20, 30 fish, you Every drop your line in, in, and all of a sudden you got a hit. Um, this year, it was real finicky out there. I mean, the last three days, it was like hit or miss, hit or miss. You know, people are using the same bait as we are, and they're catching fish, we're not catching fish. It's kind of, it was really spotty. Up to fish for, but it's important that we can study their habitat and know um, how we can keep these stocks updated with a striped bass and a flounder, how we can keep them for years to come for our future fishermen and for future years to keep their stocks healthy. And all sportsmen love to come down here and fish. And we just want to be able to- that. And that's what we want to be able to do. You need to keep a sharp eye on the uh, conservation aspect of the industry and because that's just about as the uh, most important as anything. Thank you for joining us on our first show here, and uh, we look forward to uh, bringing you more action back here soon. So check us out on uh, SmokeshowOutdoors.com for more episodes and podcasts. You can also search for us on Facebook, Smoke Show Outdoors.